What's up guys, it's Cameron here and I'm gonna talk about scripts, customer scripts, you know, responses that you would give to somebody when they message you on Facebook Marketplace for a listing or if they have a question or a problem. This is this this material that I'm covering is actually straight from my course. It was just recently added, I believe a few weeks ago, and um, I'm just gonna go over it for the channel so that everybody can have access to it because I'm not sure if it's out there yet. So um, if you're interested in you know learning more about what else is in my course that's always in the description and there's four days left it's back down to fifty dollars so it's down from 150 down to 50 but regardless of that let's get into it okay what is a customer script for those of you who don't know a customer script is just uh, something that you would copy paste you already have it typed out and you know, like when people are like, is this still available? Or, you know, if something's out of stock and you just don't want to sell it or you have an issue and you're like, crap, I can't get to this right now. I have copy paste responses that I can just paste right in that window and I don't really have to think about it or spend too much time making sure everything's spelled correctly or that I don't look stupid or that it's clear enough because I've already taken the time previously to map that out and now I can just copy paste it. Super simple. So, What's the main one that you're going to get? Um, is this item still available? Usually this is a pre-written response. It's an automatic button that a customer will push and it will just push that notification to you. And many times this is because the customer doesn't have the buy button, but sometimes customers really just ask, is this still available? And it has nothing to do with them not having a buy button or the buy button getting grayed out or any of those things. So. I keep it simple. I do not come up with this long, crazy message. I know some of you out there have these really beautiful messages that you send to people that like are very effective for you. I simply say this. Yes, I have one left if you'd like to buy it. Sometimes it makes people pull the trigger. Sometimes it doesn't. As we all know, most of the time people do not answer back to these messages. Also, a lot of the time, people will answer back to this message after I respond, and they'll be like, I never messaged you. <laughs> so a lot of the time, that is this still available? I won't even respond to anyway, but if I do, and it's like a new item that I just posted or something, I, I give it this a couple shots before I give up on responding to these altogether. Now, the next one isn't necessarily a response to something automatically. Um, this this one I have as when something is out of stock or you prefer not to sell it. So this may happen a lot of the time, especially since there's not a bunch of perfect automation software out there. You know, we get pretty close with things like FBM Fox and stuff like that, um, which you know I talk about all the time. Also, links in the description for that if you're interested. But sometimes I have somebody message me about a product that I have from so long ago that I actually don't have selected for price tracking on my software for FBM Fox and so I, I just let it do it manually and I'll just you know deal with it when it comes up and see if maybe a price has dropped back down if a customer wants to purchase it but if it's out of my price range to buy or I or the item is honestly out of stock on a website and again it's not price tracking here's what I say to them if I just don't want to sell it at all. I say, hi, I went to fulfill your order and notice that we are out of stock on this item. The fastest way for you to reverse the transaction would be for you to go into the details slash, slash options section of this message and request to cancel. So, so sorry for the inconvenience. Now, typically in business, there are two rules of thought. This is a very small little detail, so forgive me. The so sorry for the inconvenience. Most of the time, I never apologize for anything in a business setting. Um, you thank them for being patient or you do things like that, but you never say I'm sorry for anything because then it shows that you were at fault for something. Um, but for something like drop shipping and Facebook marketplace where it's more person to person, I, I don't mind using the sorry or unfortunately or those words we typically stay away from in other business settings. So, um, I like to just put that on the bottom so that they know that like, uh, you know, he, he is sorry about that, whatever. Um, one thing that the key to this message, the reason I wrote it this way is because that, that second sentence, the fastest way for you to reverse the transaction would be for you to go into the detail slash options section and request to cancel. This does a few things. Um, one, the first part of it says the fastest way to reverse the transaction. 
this incentivizes incentivizes them to handle this problem on their own. Yeah, it tells them in their brain, of course, that uh, you know this is going to be the fastest way for you to get your money back. Um, any other method, if you do, if you choose to make it more inconvenient for me, is going to make it a slower process for you to get your transaction reversed. Now, is this true? No, I don't know. I don't know how long it takes for these people to get their money back, but I know that the second part. Um, the, or the last part, I guess, the request to cancel is what keeps it from dinging my metrics in the insights part of the, the Facebook marketplace. So a lot of us know, and if you don't know already, you have to, depending on what kind of account you have, I have two accounts and both of them have different ranges that I have to stay within. So the rule of thumb before is that you can't have less or more than a 10% cancellation rate. So if I only sell 10 orders, and I have to go in myself as the seller and cancel an order because of a mistake I made or just because the customer wants to cancel and they can't figure out how to request to cancel themselves, I have to go in and hit cancel. That dings my account, and if I if I do more than 10% of my orders like that, Facebook can kick me off or temporarily suspend my account um, until I don't know when. I guess if, if, I, if I'm allowed to sell more, then the, then the percentage will raise or something, so, Either way, they can basically be like, ah, man, you suck at this marketplace thing and kick me off. Now, my other selling account, the range is 5%, but my current, my main selling account is 10%, maybe because it's older, I'm not sure. So for the, some of you guys should go check in on, on your phone in, in the mobile app. If you go to insights and then your, your profile, you can see uh, what your percentage is. Most people's is 10%, but Again, I notice my new profile is 5%, so I have to even be more strict with that. Why I bring that up, this request to cancel doesn't count if you if you do those things. So um, if they cancel it from their end, it does not penalize you. So that's, that's mainly the benefit of getting them to cancel. Anyway, now to avoid this altogether, um, I have this next one, which is a very similar message and in fact it even has mainly the same text but I've added some stuff to it so this next one is if something is out of stock or the price has changed on you the customer doesn't know that but you want to recommend another item so um, for example a long time ago I made one of my, my videos about my my best-selling products and then I made a video about how I got screwed over kind of not paying attention and selling the wrong item um, it was a kayak or whatever anyway Let's say somebody bought something from you and you're like, yay, I got a sale. And you go and fulfill that order and you're like, what? The price changed. Now it's above even me making a profit for it. What the hell? Well, you can search around on the same on, let's say you got it from Amazon or Walmart or whatever. You can search around on the same platform, whatever platform you really want to find it at. I, I do this all the time and find it for cheaper somewhere else where somebody hasn't raised the price yet. So, um, if you can't find it for cheaper though for the same exact item, then you try to find something similar. So for that kayak that I sold, it was this like green kayak, it was pretty popular for people to sell. Well, everywhere it got too expensive, no matter where I looked. So I had to find a different kayak within my price range to sell and still make a profit. So when that's the case and you wanna offer something else to a customer instead of what they actually already purchased, here's what I send them. First, I send in a photo of the alternate item. So um, I wanna send a photo first because if I send a body of text and then I send a photo underneath it, that photo is gonna push the text up possibly above where they can see it. And some people just never go and scroll up and check and they're gonna be like, what's this photo for? Um, so I make sure I send the photo first and then the body of text so that the text is the first thing they see so that they know there's something to read. They'll scroll up to the top and then see the bottom of a picture and be like, oh, there's a picture above that. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so I send the photo, and then I paste this and send it. Hi, I want to fulfill your order and notice that we are out of stock on this item. It's the same thing. I do have this one in stock though, referencing to the picture that I sent. It is normally a little more expensive, but I can send this item in its place at no extra cost for the inconvenience, if that works for you. So, you know, of course, that should make sense to most of you, but if it doesn't, I'm basically telling them, Hey, I want to hook you up because 
like, ah, oh, man, I, I had this thing on my site or my marketplace and I should have been more on top of it. It's out of stock, but you already bought it. So I'm going to go out of my way to send you something that's a little bit more expensive from my inventory because of because of the inconvenience I've cost you, even though that thing is not more expensive. In fact, it might even be cheaper. Um, as long as you compare the, the, the specs of the product and they do pretty much the exact same thing, that's fine. That all the customer thinks is, oh man, I'm getting taken care of here. That's the goal. Underneath that though, part of the message that's in there, it says, if you would prefer to cancel the order, the fastest way for you to reverse the transaction would be for you to go into the details slash options section of this message and request to cancel. Just let me know what you'd like to do and we'll make it happen. So I'm basically telling them I've got you covered no matter what. If you want me to send you something else, I've got this and it's actually gonna be better quality than what you even thought you were buying. Um, they're not gonna know the difference because what they bought is they don't have it. They don't know what the quality is yet other than what they've seen in some stupid photos. So they think they're getting something better and this works for me all the time. Um, and then I also include the cancellation part because now it just handles both. They can just pick what fork of the road they wanna go down. Um, and then the just let me know what you'd like to do and we'll make it happen. I, I always try to include something like that, just like the sorry for inconvenience, so they know I'm not some like robot or just some like automatic response. The just let me know and we'll make it happen, the, the wheel and the make it happen part, it just it makes it seem a little bit more casual and I kind of like to, it makes it feel like they're talking to a person that's trying to be professional a little bit more from the first part, but then the unprofessional part comes out at the end a little bit if that makes sense. Okay, now these ones suck. What if the product arrived broken and damaged and a customer contacts you? I've had people do this. Um, they usually send you photos and they, they're they not usually happy. <laughs> so what I do is whatever the photos they sent me, whatever, I, I paste this. It says, oh no, that is unacceptable. See, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm telling them and agreeing with them that this is ridiculous. Um, and, and I do not agree with the fact that, um, they got this, you know, I, I'm, I'm displeased that this is what their experience was like. So I'm on their side immediately. Um, I will contact my supplier to get this resolved and see what steps we need to take to get this taken care of for you. That second sentence, I'm covering their, their ass basically. I, I'm telling them I've got you. I'm on your side. I'm going to take care of this for you no matter what. And I also slip in that I will contact my supplier. That way they know, it tells them in their brain, oh, this guy's more of a business. Um, it wasn't necessarily his fault, um, even though he should be on top of his stuff. There is somebody that he can go to to fix this issue. It's not just something that's sitting in this guy's garage. So it makes them feel like we have more options at our disposal to take care of them. Um, I said, usually with my supplier, they have you return an item, and then once the item shows returned, I can issue, or I can either issue a refund or set out a replacement. I will update you once I have a solution. So sorry for the inconvenience. So I'm I'm setting, I'm planting the seed up front. I'm I'm setting the tone and setting expectations with my customer that um, they're going to have to return the item. Um, it's not going to be something that they can keep which isn't always the case, but I'm making them think that they're gonna have to return this no matter what. This tells them, okay, let me not destroy the packaging. So hopefully we've gotten out in front of them just like killing the box and throwing everything away. Um, it also is again, a thing you're reiterating that you're gonna take care of them. And it's kind of setting a pace for how this thing might move forward. So they do need to return it. They will get a, a replacement or a refund and it's totally their choice. So again, you're taking care of them. I will update you once I have a solution. This just gives you some buffer room to kind of figure out what you want to do. So a lot of the times I buy stuff from Amazon. If something truly is broken and um, it's small or sometimes even a big item, a lot of the time Amazon will just send out a replacement for free and they don't even need you to return the item. What's cool about this is I told my customer that they, they're gonna have to return it but now if I can get them, if I can get a replacement sent out to them without having to have them return the item, I can make it seem like I went super above and beyond for them. So like I'll usually respond something like, like, hey, I went ahead and just sent out another item for you. Don't worry about returning this. Um, use it as you, as you will or, or throw it away completely up to you. I do not need it back. Um, 
I just want to make sure you get taken care of. So another one's on its way. That makes people be like, holy crap, like this person wasted inventory just to make sure I was taken care of. That's what I'm trying to do. So, um, but sometimes they do have to return things. And if that's the case, I, let's say Amazon and they I choose like the Amazon um, pre-packed label or something. A lot of the time also they'll have an option for free where UPS will just pick up the item on their porch. I select what kind of way is the most in, it was most inconvenient, the most convenient return and I will copy or even like copy paste the instructions in an email or on a Word document and uh, then I will save the return label if there's a return label. Basically I'll do whatever the instructions say but I will remove it from Amazon's branding and I will then send that to the customer. That way they have clear instructions on what to do. I will take away stupid stuff from the body that says Amazon or, or you know, store locator or whatever. And then I'll help them from there. If they have to drop it off at an Amazon store, I will look at the address from the drop shipping, you know, account that they made, what, their order that I sent the item to. I will plug that into the UPS store locator and I will find the closest UPS store to their address. I will copy that address and send it to them and say, this looks like it's the closest location to your address. Um, feel free to drop it off here or at any store that you like. But I just try to get them as much information to get them get it done as possible. And I never have had an issue because these people recognize that I'm taking my time to help them. Anyway, that's a long answer. But that covers a lot of things. Feel free to ask questions about that one because it is kind of got a little nuance in it depending on a situation. So comment down below if you have questions on any of these. Okay. Somebody's like, th this is one of the last uh, two. If somebody's kind of thrown off by the supplier thing, your supplier, you mean you aren't shipping these? Um, you'll get something like that. It's very, very rare, but I've got it twice, maybe. Um, all I say is this, and it usually shuts everything up very quickly. Um, I say, ever since COVID, many of my products have switched to online sales. Now my suppliers for my products allow me to ship my inventory straight to my customers rather than having to hold everything at my business. This is why I refer to my supplier, if that makes sense. So... This just tells them, look, man, times are a changing. And um, they just assume you have a brick and mortar business and now you've converted sales online. Again, the last sentence of this is to make them know that I'm just a normal person. This is why I refer to my supplier, if that makes sense. Kind of sounds conversational. You see me say this in my videos all the time, if that makes sense. It's just a little person to person line that's very intentional and manipulative. All right. Um, if somebody says this, this is just a throwaway one, but you'll get this from time to time. Where can I pick this item up? Or like, where's the pickup? I'm buying locally. Even though my listing says shipping only, these people don't care. I say, hi, at the moment I am only shipping my inventory to customers instead of doing in-person meetups. I currently have two of these lists, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Never get a response back, but it's something to send them so that you can make sure you get responses taken care of. And who knows, maybe somebody will buy it. Um, one thing I didn't include in here, is depending on what the item is, you should also put, like if it has free shipping, just put, but I'm doing free shipping right now because of because of the inconvenience or just because whatever your excuse is. And who knows, maybe they'll buy it, but it never nobody ever usually buys it when I do that. So those are my scripts straight from my course. Um, again, the course is $50 off. I will be adding more scripts to this. These, these are just newer and because I, I think they're valuable for people to have. Um, many people have other scripts than this. They'll use emojis and I, I just, the more you add to stuff like this, the less person to person it feels, which is what Facebook marketplace is supposed to be. So you don't want to, you know, frill these up too much. You just want to keep them simple. You want to keep them real and you want to keep them effective. They need to have a purpose. They're not just fluff filler. If you send somebody a Bible worth of text, they're not going to read it and they're going to feel inconvenienced. So you need to simplify, like I said, but Comment down below if you do anything um, about maybe some scripts that you use. Um, do you agree or disagree with some of these? Do you find that some of these are inconvenient? Or um, just anything else that helps out anybody else watching this video. We're all about just making sure people have tools and access to the information because sometimes this stuff can be hard to find. So thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, of course, and I will see you next time.